might have to see if uh, Zayna wants to switch out the 350 for the 500. What do you think is the better choice? In your honest opinion, I know you, you sell cars and things like that, but between the 350 and the 500, which one do you think is more worth it? It has a little get up to it. You can get away with one like 150 and nobody will bother you. That sounds like a challenge. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> Try a 40 roll. So we are back at the Lexus dealership. If you guys haven't seen the previous videos, obviously I got an M4. We recently got a 350. This one's pretty nice right here, but I don't know if the 350 is enough. So let's go out here and see about this 500. This is Corey right here. He, he's cool enough to assist us today. So this is the 500, huh? Car that doesn't disappoint, I'll tell you that. Yeah? I mean, V8 in a car this small, you gotta love it. It don't make cars like this anymore, so there's yeah. a reason I work for this brand. For sure. So you've driven, obviously, probably the 350 and the 500, yeah? 350, 500, yep. What do you think about the difference between the two? The 350 is just a solid build, and knowing that you got a 600 that can get real groovy and go through those lines. But the sound that you get from this V8 just hitting that acceleration, there's yeah. nothing like it. Yeah. And this car shouldn't have this engine in it, and that's why I love this iteration so much over the, the 350. What Looks a, like the same car, but yeah. that's why I love it so much. It's almost like a sleeper. Once you right. get it on the road, people are not expecting this yeah. engine inside of there. So. For sure. Well, I'm excited to see the difference. What about the gas mileage? How, how big of a difference is that? Actually, it's not too, too crazy. Um, Gas mileage, I believe, in that six under is around what 25 miles per gallon combined. Yeah. Versus this one, if I'm right. Let's see. It should be 20. Yeah, 20 miles around per gallon. Around 20. So the price is almost about a ten thousand dollar difference. Yep. Just to get a V8. If you look at that 350 that's in there. Yeah. It's an all-wheel drive, and we like fully loaded that one out. I actually ordered that one myself to put Six, it in the showroom. 60k. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's got like an active exhaust in there and everything. So, but you can get a 350 that's going to cost the same as a 500, but. Right. There's a reason why this one's just a little bit more. Just For sure. So this is not base. It has the BBS wheels, but... Yeah, that is the one interesting interesting thing about this car is they all come fully loaded. Oh, the for real? One weird thing about it is some of them come without the BBSs, some of them don't. But this uh, is the package that they always come in. Oh, okay. Got you. So you'll get that upgraded sound system, that bigger navigation screen. So they're all the same? Mm -hmm. The 500, yes. So there's nothing more that you can get on this? Mm -hmm. It's got everything that you could think of getting in even an IS 350. It's got oh. the 360 cameras, so left side, right side, front and back, that Mark Levinson sound system. And then as you can see in here, you'll have heated and cooling seats, everything that got the IS white has interior that. in yeah. this one. White on white. My favorite features about this car is a lot of our cars don't come with this, uh -huh. but you'll get an OEM dash camera straight from Lexus. So you'll see that right here installed in there. That comes with every 500? No, that's why I'm saying this one's just a little bit different. Oh, okay. And it's only a $375 option. It sends video straight from there to your phone. It's super cool. So does that come with like a subscription or something like that? No you subscription, have to... no. It's oh, just so it's all... All included. All right, well, shoot. Yeah, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get it. All right. Yeah, one of the coolest things about this body style, I don't know if you noticed, but that uh, sunroof, it goes inside the body instead of coming out like most cars do. Yeah, I did so see that. The performance of it. So pretty much uh, the same feel as the 350. Everything's pretty much going to be exactly the same aside from the engine, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, sir. We we already know what Eco feels like. We don't need to, you know, we don't need to experience that. And is there something else I can help with? No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> You don't mind if I have a little fang and go crazy, no, but definitely up for it. All right, bet. Let's see, we got the active exhaust. That's what this is called, the active exhaust. Active uh, sound control. Active sound control. Got that turned all the way up. Yeah, 
Actuated. Yeah, especially if you were to do just a little bit to the exhaust system and open up that sound a little more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that V8, you can't beat that sound. This car's just got so much potential. thing I will say is the car is extremely smooth, the same as the 350. Mm -hmm. The engineering on this car is, is done well. Top two. I ain't gonna lie, I like the steering wheel look and feel better than the M4. I have obviously, it's a 2020, mm -hmm. but since I think like 2016-ish, mm -hmm. since it, it came out, they didn't really do much to change the steering wheel. So to me, the M4 steering wheel, the F80 and F82 is kind of like basic. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, I like the look of this one. It seems like an upgraded steering wheel, you know? 110%. And that's the, the steering wheel with more of like the gloss finish as well too, right? Yeah, and I don't Just really like, like that either. Small, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's kind of more of a shiny finish to it. I like this, it's like a more of a matte finish. It feels good. It's crazy too because that is the only thing that is real leather in this car. Oh really? Everything else is synthetic leather. This ain't real leather? Nope. Damn, I mean, that's one thing I, I uh, mentioned in the other one. I was like, dang, this is nice and soft. <laughs> it's not real. It's insane. They got me with that one. How much horsepower does this have? Should be, because I know my LC, the one that has the same engine, uh -huh. does 472. 472, that's not bad. Not at all. Yeah, so it's got a lot of tuning potential, especially too. One thing people always say about this engine in particular with um, the transmission is they wish it had the LC transmission. Uh, this is a 10 speed, uh -huh. this one's an 8 speed. So oh, it's just that okay. little difference. Yeah. But yeah, you're going to get in that lane, so I'm sure you can clear them out. Good though. Let's see. Here's the difference. Oh yeah. yeah it, so it definitely turns it up. So what you're hearing is there's microphones inside the engine bay that when you turn the active sound control up, it pump, pumps it through the speakers as well too to kind of give you more of that big cabin noise. Gosh, it's insane. Which I don't mind. Some people will say, oh, it's fake noise, yeah, exactly. but I don't mind that whatsoever. So from the engine, so. Yeah. I usually take this route because 90% of the time you can get away with going like 150 and nobody will bother you. So okay. see what I mean in just a second. Got you. That sounds like a challenge. Yeah, you got to, you <laughs> got to hit it up real quick. All right, bet. Just go ahead and let loose. We'll get to a roundabout to where it'll turn us around. Okay. You want to try the paddle shifters. Try a 40 roll. Definitely hear the sound difference as well. Mm -hmm. As far as like everything else is pretty much exactly the same. It's so smooth. 
you know, I've never been to a Lexus person since Zayna got hers, and I've been driving it a little bit. They've grown on me a lot. Yeah, 110%. From an outside perspective, it's hard to be a Lexus person. I mean, oh, they, yeah. we're kind of outdated in the sense of our technology, you know what I mean? Yeah. Most of the time, you see people in Lexuses, they're at least 75 years old. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not bad at it, but when you really sit in one and enjoy it every day, it's one of those cars that just doesn't disappoint. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful, too. Like, I, I will say... Lexus did a great job with the look of their vehicles because there's nothing like you know that's a Lexus right, you know with the front end of it like nobody has those headlights mm -hmm. so it I love the look of it I the, the rear end on these ones did have to grow on me because yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the I don't know like the full yeah. light bar you know like that kind of had to grow on me but it did grow on me so I, I do appreciate the look of the car now mm -hmm. for sure but the front end I've always liked it's super aggressive yeah. and it's very like I said there's nothing that looks like it mm -hmm. and like I said we were outdated with the technology but the fact that you still got physical buttons in here I don't know if you've seen like my new SUVs and things like that to where it's full touch screen I haven't seen that my favorite part about this car is these full buttons to where you can actually touch them and press them and things like that yeah for sure like even the new G82s they got that full like display screen there's no more shortcut buttons that's oh. why the F82 is so or the F80 is so popular because you still have your shortcut buttons and things like that yeah yeah everything's going fully digital yeah. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm kind of like on your side with that, like still having the actual buttons. Exactly. So how would it work? I don't know if you could answer this for me, but say Zayna did want to come and trade in the 350 for a 500. Mm -hmm. Now she has 6,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. How would that work? Basically just plug in the numbers of what the car is worth now, especially a car like that. They didn't release a lot of her 350s. I don't know why. They're releasing more 300s and 500s. So it's weird that 350 is like a sweet gem. Mm. Um, but we just have to see what the value still is in the car. She probably lose like a little bit of money, but nothing crazy. This is rear wheel, yeah? Yep. Rear wheel mm -hmm. drive. Do they come in the all wheel drives as well? Not this model specifically, no. Not the 500s? Yeah, the 350s do. Yeah, she got an all wheel drive on hers. Mm -hmm. I prefer rear wheel drive. This is a little more fun, you know. Yeah. For me, I like you know her in the all-wheel drive because it's a little more safe, safe for her, yeah. you know. But um, we like to get squirmy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of um, Lexus's all-wheel drive system too because it's rear-wheel biased as well. So if you can't go wrong with that system, it's just having the option. I'm gonna go rear-wheel drive. Every yeah, time. for sure. Now with the Beamers, we got the X drive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Initially, I wasn't like I wasn't aware that I thought it was just all-wheel drive X drive. But then, like, I came come to find out you could switch between rear wheel yeah, and... Exactly. It's like, bro, what? That's How could insane. you do that? Yeah, it's crazy. And the paddle shifters, I will say, are extremely responsive. That's something I do like as well. Some cars you get in and you hit the paddle shifter and it's like half a second before it does anything. And I hate that. Like, I drove a C7 before. And those for some reason, those paddle shifters, like, the Scat paddle shifters were more responsive than right. those. In your honest opinion, I know you, you sell cars and things like that, but... <laughs> Do you think the uh, price difference between the 350 and the 500, which one do you think is more is more worth it? It's, it's, it's 500 all day. Man. The 500 all day? Just because, like I said, was saying earlier, 10 years from now, people are going to be like, damn, I wish I had a 500. <laughs> and then you're going to look out in the market, and now we're making like twin turbo V6s and things like that. Yeah, so, yeah. I know that V8's coming to an end very soon, so this is one of those just like prize cars, just kind of like how like the GS is now. A lot of people want the GSs now that we don't make them anymore. Uh -huh. It's just like you gotta find the timing of once you get that car and you know it's right. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Just... For sure, one of the one of the last of the naturally aspirated V8s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a sad world we're coming to. Yeah, bro. I don't know, man. They're trying to make everything electric. Mm -hmm. That's actually one of the things Lexus is working on is a um, all electric manual car, um, gear shift, and all that. So they want to put a clutch in a manual. Car. For real? Yeah, that's just research oh, they're doing right now. That would be pretty dope. Mm -hmm. I just can't get, I don't know, I don't know, like, I've never even been in a fully electric car, I don't think, but, like, just the fact that there's no sound and... You're not missing out on much, bro, I promise you. Lexus just released their first all-electric car. It's probably the biggest headache I've had to date. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the car says it does 220 miles of range. If you don't turn on AC, it does not 280. Mm -hmm. But it's weird little things like, hey, if you're playing your music too loud, you're cutting down on your range. If you hit the gas pedal too fast, you're cutting down on your range. It's just like... Yeah, yeah, see, I didn't even think of anything yeah, like exactly. that. 
and then the fact that you're sitting on a big ass battery like they haven't even done the long-term research of that you're literally sitting on a bunch of radiation you know so yeah and then you got to like stop and wait what like 20 30 minutes for it to charge an hour yeah for real it's like how how is that moving forward bro like (laughs) it doesn't make sense I mean, there is, um, what's it called? It's a Chinese company. Damn, I used to have some stocks in it too. But anyways, basically you drive over, instead of charging your car, you drive over it mm-hmm. and it switches out your battery with a, a new battery. Oh, shit. So yeah. each time you just switch out the battery. Uh-huh. That would be a lot better, you know? Mm-hmm. That way you don't have to stop for a whole hour and you know you just stop like and yeah. replace the battery and you're out. Yeah, those cars cause a world of problems. one thing I do aside from the cars and everything Lexus has to have one of the best you know customer service mm-hmm. the reliability on Lexus like combined with the performance and everything you get with it mm-hmm. you can't really beat that can't you can't all. really beat that these cars freaking last forever they hold their value yeah man I tried to sit I tried to hit you up bro you're over there making money so you know we had to get Corey over here man i'm out of the office so i'm happy <laughs> yeah i appreciate you bro for sure for sure if you guys are in the area in sb you're a salesperson yeah mm-hmm. come see my guy Corey. help him get to his m4 goals man yeah one big note i'll tell you guys is we had our two is 500s for over 50 days so let i'll let you know right now great pricing on these cars i won't give you the whole secret but just know if you come see me you're gonna get the car for a good price every time you heard it here first come see him santa barbara california i mean if you're in california you could travel to get a good deal you know i know me personally i went all the way to berkeley to get my m4 you know that's like four or five hours away all right there we go yeah, so especially from your bro situation too this one's been here for like seven seven days and then that one that's in the showroom has been in for like 53 days and that one in the showroom is pretty nice yeah. i like that i was looking at it a little while ago we'll have to see i like the 500 you can feel the difference you can hear the difference the gas mileage isn't too much of a difference and then the price about an eight thousand dollar difference we'll see maybe next time i'll have to come and uh test drive the the rc that's the coupe right mm-hmm. yeah that's the coupe yeah, version of this got that one that's our first one this year that's the first one this year mm-hmm. that we've gotten personally as far as the looks go the rc the rc looks pretty nice yeah, you know i'm a coupe sick. guy myself yeah, i yeah. like the coupes and then the rear end on the rcs they don't have the one tail light my guy sid there he is again we test drove the is 500 Ooh, that's a good one yeah so we're, we're, we're gonna i don't know man we might have to see if uh, zayna wants to switch out the 350 for the 500 what do you think what do you think is the the better option the better choice i mean she has a pretty highly spec'd out 350 it's a custom order and that has almost everything that the is 500 would have right so she's saving a lot of money that's true that's true funny story this is the same custom order really for the same client and it's wrong again no this is perfect they just couldn't pick it up why? Oh, they got the previous oh, customer. Oh, oh. This is the same. This is the He's s- telling the story about this one. The right. same customer of the Zayna one that Zayna got. Yeah. The Zayna first got order. The previous one. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> I was wondering how that car went missing. Yes. So yeah. this is the same exact spec. Same exact spec. But I was gonna like, say I like this color. What happened with that is, <laughs> my manager's gonna kill me when I say this. So custom order was good. We took it in about September, yeah. maybe November, some somewhere around that area. Uh-huh. Um, she wanted this color. But when I saw it in the allocation status, I was like, bro, this is not her car, it's the wrong color. And they're like, oh no, it's fine, just call her when the car gets here, she won't even notice. I'm like, yes, she will. (laughs) It's a very big color difference. So finally bring her in, kind of act like I'm stupid, even though I know I'm doing my job. So show her the car, and she's like, this is not my car. And I'm like, well, this is the one they ordered for you. Yeah, it was supposed to be Cloudburst Gray. So then I have to sit there and basically take the bullet for them, and then they're like, all right, we'll go ahead and order another one. It'll be fast, yada, yada. This one took like another three months to come in finally got here and then she was just like i don't have time so 
What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, one's, this one's been here for a little bit. Time for the dream car. <laughs> it, really, it really does break my heart because I know this was everything that she wanted. So um, Yeah. Well, if you're watching this, come pick up your car. It's here now. Yeah, this is another one that, uh, good deal. Good deal. This for is, sure. yeah, that's crazy. Zayna got the previous one, but the one you were just saying was the wrong order, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is the right order, but now she didn't, she wasn't able to pick it up again. Wow. Exactly. Out of the three available IS 500s with white on red interior, we have two of them at our dealership in California. You guys heard it here first. Come see my guy yeah. Sid and my guy Corey. You already heard it. And Joe. <laughs> Joe Come see Joe as well. You know you want to say it. You know what we're doing? <laughs> Just hanging around. <laughs> Joe's the funny guy. These guys, super cool guys. Like I said, they work with you. Come check them out, create a relationship with them, see what they're all about. Absolutely, have a great day guys. We try to build a hugely amazing relationship with you guys and come in, ask for sales, we'd love to help you out. There it is. Back to the IS350. That is crazy that we seen the other car that this one was initially supposed to be. It's cool that we were able to get both Sid and Corey's opinion. Of course, Corey said, that he feels the 500 is the better option. But Sid knew, you know, everything that Zayna got. So he was able to give his opinion as well. And I feel like he he's leaning more towards this one because of all the options and everything. So now that we're freshly out of the 500 and we got to fill that, we'll throw this thing in sport mode. Sport plus. So for sure, you could feel the difference. I wouldn't say that it's a crazy difference between the 500 and the 350. But the, the 500 has a little more get up. But now actually being in the 350, it doesn't seem like that, like that big of a difference. There is a difference that you can feel for sure. Obviously you can hear a difference as well. That 500 sounded nice and I already know if you do just a little bit to open up that exhaust, that thing would sound mean. This one sounds good too. We'll see once we're, once we get this green light, we'll give it one more go. I don't know man. Does it warrant an extra eight thousand dollars on the msrp what do you guys think let me know your guys's opinions down below i know obviously you can't feel the difference maybe some of you have felt the difference between the 350 and the 500 um, but just from what you guys are seeing what you guys are hearing you know what do you guys think 